It will not be easy. Start each day with a task completed. Find someone to help you through life. Respect everyone. Know that life is not fair and that you will fail often. But if you take some risks, step up when the times are the toughest, face down the bullies, lift up the downtrodden, and never ever give up. If you do these things, the next generation and the generations that follow will live in a world far better than the one we have today. And what started here will indeed have changed the world for the better. I'm Alex Del Sordo of Rower's Choice, and with me is Mike the Commish Wallen. And we're just two days away from what I think is the biggest thing in rowing. Uh, you can argue with me, but this is a live draft happening Wednesday night. But right now, today, the most important day is announcing who goes first, what teams choose, what athletes comes next. Now, Wallen, the Commish, this is a big moment. We got six teams. Can you explain to me really quick how this draft functions, how this all works? Sure. This is super exciting. Uh, it's the first time rowers are actually going to get drafted that I've ever heard of. I'm jealous that this didn't happen for me when I was younger, but this is going to work just like a fantasy football draft. There's going to be six teams, six picks. It's going to snake back around. So it's going to go one through six, then six back down through one, and you're going to compile your team one after another in each of the categories, junior, open, and masters. And look who got the first pick, Northwest Kodiaks, Micah Boyd. This guy is an animal uh, Olympian. He knows junior rowing. That's a big pick. Number one, Northwest Kodiaks. That's a, I, what do you think? That's a good pick for them. I don't think anybody doesn't want the number one pick. Uh, <laughs> you know, I would, uh, I would be looking personally at uh, this a little bit outside the box, but I think I'd be looking to go with a master out of the gun. Let's get, I want to, I want to talk more about that, but the next pick coming up, what is it going to be? I'm kind of anxious now. Wow. What is it? Or is it clicking? Holy cow. Okay. The frozen tundra, the winners of last year's um, uh, PRL season one, we have, um, who's there now? Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's Rob Carson, a CrossFitter, gym owner. Um, you expecting big things out of this guy? He's not really a rower. He's a, he's yeah, a CrossFit guy. But this is, this is a lot more in the CrossFit wheelhouse. So I actually think he's going to have some great insight. He's going to know uh, athletes that aren't necessarily just great in a boat. He's going to know people that can really crank that wheel. That's a good point. I like the two pick. I like that position. That's a, that's a good spot to be. Okay. Is it, where's it clicking over? It's going, wow. Southwest Armada. All right. So this is a big change. Actually, we have dark horse rowing. One of the sponsors, the sponsor of Southwest Armada and the coach, John Healy rower CrossFit gym guy, third pick. Uh, what do you think about that guy? I think what it's super interesting it? that these guys are back to back, right? They have a very similar approach. I think they're going to be poaching a lot of the same athletes from each other, which is, I mean, I hate when that happens to me in fantasy, when you're back to a guy who drafts just like you, it sucks that you're pilfering each other's guys back to back to back. So we'll see who gets who they need. Now, a big thing though, Southwest Armada, it was Chris Leonard. He's gone. He's moved somewhere else. And we're going to get to that in a second. Southeast Storm, Sarah Lowe coming in, the fourth pick. Look, she was the league MVP coach. She is the, she's the best. In my opinion, she's the best. Where do you, what do you think about her in fourth slot? I'm not going uh, to bet against the uh, all-time virtual coaching uh, legend in Sarah Lowe, <laughs> but uh, I think the middle is a tough spot. It either goes really well for you and the right things fall, or you just you keep just missing your guy, and it can get pretty frustrating. So we'll see what happens. Right, and then now we're coming down to the final two. The biggest talked about team was the South Outlaws last year. They are, okay, they're number five pick. The big shift here, though, is Chris Leonard is now in charge of the big South Outlaws. He was the biggest hater of the South, the Big South Outlaws. Does that does that ruin the mojo, Mike? You know, you had a guy, the biggest hater of that program. What do you think? It could, but I mean, I love the drama, man. It kind of reminds me in a, a very poor man's version of when, when Brett Favre went to the Vikings. Okay. <laughs> like the, finishing out, rounding out the Northeast founders. Uh, this is Abby Young. Uh, you're connected to her. You have a background with her. Abby is in the sport of rowing. So I love that she's the sixth pick because what the snake, we talked about this, right? She gets the sixth and the seventh. In my opinion, 
that's the biggest advantage. You got these back-to-back -back picks. You get to see what else, what everyone else is doing. What's your opinion on being in the sixth pick for those for that team? I think nobody roots for it, but like you're alluding to, it can be it can be an advantage to go back to back, especially if you really want to target dominating a specific category. I feel really, I feel like there's two ways to go. You're going to try to dominate specific categories, or you're going to try to spread it out and have an even attack. Um, having back to back picks, you know, really lets you really allows you the opportunity to let the draft fall to you and, and choose one of those strategies and execute it pretty well. Okay, so you said it in the very beginning here. You said that you'd be going after a master. So really quick, let me run down. There's four junior boys, four junior girls. Like that's a bulk of your team. And then you have masters and open. Now you're telling me if you were running the show, you'd be going after a master. Why is that? Why would you go first round master pick? Because there's only two of them, right? There's only two per gender. And um, you, if you can lock down guaranteed points there, I think you'll be able to manufacture some points in the other categories. That's my guess. The other categories are pretty deep. It's similar to uh, your quarterback in fantasy. If you play in a fantasy football league with one quarterback and you draft a quarterback um, too early, um, you know, you're going to, you're going to be missing, missing spots, but the, the quarterback position is super deep in fantasy, just like the junior women, just like the open women. So that's what I'm getting at. I don't know how deep the master's category is going to be, but you can close the deal. Like if you have the top two masters men and they show up every week, you're guaranteed those two points. Um, mm -hmm. And same thing with the women. So that's where I, that's where my head's at. This is the first time we're doing it. So that could be the absolute wrong strategy, but I would be looking to, lockdown corners uh, in each each spot where I know I'm going to get points and then try to find a way into, um, you know, stealing the third and fourth point in the other brackets. My biggest concern, knowing that three of the coaches are junior athlete coaches, oh, well, four of them, Micah, um, is that they would go after juniors first, right? And like, and I almost only like wonder, who's that jackass that picks the defense first, right? Like who, who who's the idiot that picks the defense the first round? My, my gut, my gut is that Sarah's going to go junior pick. Okay. I think she's going to go a junior route first. I, I think she's, that's her route. And I think Micah is going to be the jackass that picks the defense first, right? In the NFL, right? In the NFL fantasy draft. Because yeah. he's never done this before, right? He only knows what he knows. Uh, do you have an opinion on that one? Well, it's different because you're not, you're not just, um, you're not playing positions as much. You're you're trying to win categories. So you you can go junior first. It's just, it's gonna a lot's gonna have to fall together for for whatever whatever you pick first. It's gonna have to come together. You can't go junior and get the top junior and then have three more that can't compete because you'll get one out of the four points every week. So you, I feel like you have to have at least two strong competitors in each field. The list of athletes are coming out tonight. So all the coaches, including you, are going to get the list of all the athletes. I got to tell you right now, because I got an inside track on this, there is a lot of masters, man. I mean, more than we had seen ever before. And, and a lot of masters women. This is really exciting. The depth in that, I got to tell you, there's going to be masters people that are not picked this year. Mm -hmm. Truthfully, I mean, there's that many, it's that deep. My, where I sit right now, we found the superstars like Paris Miller, Killian, we found superstars in last year's events. I think the superstars this year, Mike, are going to be in the Masters men category, like the Ross Loves and like these other like Thor's Hammer. Um, I guess we got to wait and see, right? I mean, we got to wait and see who's going to be the, the celebrity. It could be. I mean, the reason I'm gravitating towards the Masters with the early picks is there's only two slots. And so even if it's that deep, you know, you really, you know, if you do it right, I think there's a possibility where you can lock down two points every week in a category that you know, everybody's frustrated they're not scoring it. I think the four four slot categories have a lot of depth, but they also have a lot of wind. Like you can have the best two kids and your last two kids can lose and you split the points two to two, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm glad. I mean, it is a deep it is a deep athlete field, like you said, in the Masters, but because it's two slots, I think there's a lot of power to be gained if you can control those two points. The biggest change this year, aside from the draft, is the consolidation of programs, right? So we went from 10 teams across the country to six. Um that right there alone makes this thing much more competitive. Are you expecting these one split, one second gaps this year? Like, are you expecting tight finishes this year more so than last? Yes, because the teams are going to be a lot more even because of the draft. Um, and as always, the shorter the distance, the closer the finish. And that's that's what we have in the PRL. We have we're going to have very even teams, uh, assuming the draft, um, you know, goes well for each squad. Um, and we're going to have short races. So these are going to be very evenly matched athletes going for a short explosive distance. 
And um, I think even more so than last year, we're going to have some really tight finishes. If you looked at last question, if you looked at the athletes from last year, assuming most of them are coming back, what's your prediction on number one pick tonight? Give me your, can you think of the athletes from this, from last year? They'd say, that's my guy. Um, well, I mean, the beauty of the number one pick is as long as you take the top dog in any of the categories, you're not going to have a bad pick. That person's going to put up points for you every week. So I think it comes down to strategy. Are you, are you trying to control the masters or are you saying, man, I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try to blow up the junior men and just control that category. And if, if you could do that, man, what a, what a power move. So um, there's a lot of options. I, I think it depends on the strategy. I don't have a pick. Um, if it was me, I mean, no. Paris Miller, last year's MVP, super easy pick. I know she's not a master, but it's just such a such a dominant force that you know it's a, you can't go wrong with it. It's just kind of a safe pick. I like in the first round to take a pick where I know there's not a lot of risk, right? There's no no real risk with Paris. I mean, Paris was nearly undefeated. Um, I'd go Jordan Falcone. I'm going Jordan Falcone. That's my number one pick. Masters women undefeated all last year. She was a candidate for the league MVP. Um, well, that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Mike, you have any last words for the coaches and the managers coming up on Wednesday? Any last words? Check out the depth in each category, uh, spread it out, um, and just be prepared for whatever falls to you. And anyone tuning in watching not signed up, you have until midnight tonight. If your name is not on that list by midnight tonight, you're not in the league. You don't want to miss out on this. Thanks for tuning in. More from us on Wednesday night. Cannot miss it live on YouTube. See you then.